Um, yes. You know, we had Jeremy. Yeah, Corbyn everything's who's... going south. Yeah, yeah, yeah everything true. is going south. It's all going south, south right? Yeah. Right, so, it's going so... south, but that it's not all or nothing. It doesn't mean that it goes south until everything completely vanishes. Yeah, but, but do you think right? Which people... many people can easily say that, yeah. you know, it's all going south. There's okay. absolutely nothing we can do. global warming is a hoax. It's the liberals complaining. Business as usual is just fine. The Al Gore crowd sees climate change as real. Humans are the cause. But it's not that urgent. Minor tweaks to the marketplace can fix this. Group 3 says markets cannot fix the problem. Positive feedback will rapidly transform our planet. The consequences will be severe. Three incompatible views. How did we get here? In the 1960s, the men and women who ended fascism on two continents during World War II reached middle age. They looked around to find people being beaten in the streets, severe environmental degradation, and kids coming home from foreign wars in body bags. In response, they elected a Congress that passed a huge amount of progressive legislation. Many of these new laws reduced the rate at which rich people could get richer. To counter these setbacks, on August 23, 1971, Lewis Powell wrote a memo in which he urged businessmen to pool a lot of money and change the attitudes and beliefs of Americans. Every year since then, billions have flowed to think tanks to create pro-corporate mythology and to purchase media to spread these ideas. As part of this effort, Big Energy has invested less than a penny per dollar of profit to move folks from Group 3 to the Al Gore crowd to the deniers. As a result, every effort to cut greenhouse gas emissions has been stalemated, and roughly half of all Americans believe global warming is a fraud. Is climate change real? How can we know? From antibiotics to skyscrapers, planes to DVDs, computers to plastics, science has delivered all the technologic wonders we take for granted today. So what does science tell us? In 1978, we launched a satellite. Part of its mission was to measure Arctic ice. 
This is 35 years of daily ice sheet volume measurements in thousands of cubic kilometers. How do you measure ice volume from orbit? Ice is less dense than water. When floating, part of it sits above water. The satellite sends out a pulse and measures the time until the reflection returns. Because it knows its altitude precisely, it can determine the height of the ice and thus thickness. And uh, tonight we're going to talk about something called tipping point. The tipping point, meaning the singular big tipping point, and not, you know, not the everyday small tipping points like leaving the room and going into the kitchen or bathroom or stepping outside or whatever. Small little things uh, individual people m might call tipping points in their daily lives. So this is the big climate tipping point uh, beyond which there is no going back. So it's yeah, it's a uh, big important stuff and uh, excuse me for uh, covering it but some some people have to cover this as well not just the soccer scores or the uh, latest uh, tweets from different presidents so in this uh, rather old but still unpublished book and uh, I'll return to why it's not published. Uh, Joe Tindall uh, goes into this problematic and he has an illustration on the front cover with a brick that is tipped over, you know, tipping point, tipped over. So if you push this, imagine if you, if you push uh, your finger to this uh, brick from the left on the screen. If you push this brick to a point, it continues to fall down to the ground. And that is what tipping points are all about. Um, there is a point on our return uh, where they can no longer go back to, to where they were. Okay, so in the next slide, we will look at how it, how this looks in the Arctic, in the sea ice volume, in the amount of ice that we have on top of the fifth world ocean, the Arctic Ocean. So you have a uh, steadily heating ocean at the top of the planet. Uh, and on top of uh, that ocean, which is warming up, you have thin ice that is getting thinner and thinner every decade. So what do you think that ice is going to do? Well, it's already started. And here on this four pane uh, view, you have the longer term uh, averages for sea ice volume. And re remember that Remember what your teacher told you in school, weather is a day-to-day, -day, everyday, things like snow one day, rain one day, sunshine another day, that's not climate, uh, that's weather. And uh, the long-term trends and developments, they are climate. And, you know, uh, in the me meteorology, they have 30 year averages that only update every 30 years. And that's for a reason because uh, you need a number of decades in order to see what is just random ups and downs and what is uh, actually new normals as we said back in the 20th century. Of course in this century we don't have a new normal and we won't have new normals because we are in a runaway development. So um, uh, you have a four year average for sea ice, five year, six year and nine year. And the reason I picked uh, just these four is that uh, they have all uh, 
got to a new milestone in the past week, uh, or at least three of them have, and the nine-year trend is going to cross a milestone in the week after this episode. But I included it you know, just to, you know, have uh, one to have a longer term trend than, than these other uh, around five year uh, trends. So what you're seeing here is um, you are here. So you're actually here, 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 and here. You are four places at the same time. Um, these are just different ways of looking at uh, the trend. Um, of course, the four year average trend is um, four years of daily sea ice volume um, averaged. So that's like, uh, f yeah, 1400 days or something uh, that are averaged. So in this, uh, you are here point, it's the last 1400 days. Uh, till yesterday and if you go back to um, 2015 this point this is also an average point uh, there you have uh, four years or 1400 days before these last 1400 days averaged okay so all of these points are uh, four year calculated averages of the sea ice and uh, in that way you can see how how it trends uh, because instead of having a day-to-day -day graph uh, which will go up and down with the seasons and the months and stuff you have a longer 1400 day trend so in general you can say that the shorter the trend, four and five, uh, the more uh, roller coaster ups and downs you get, and the longer the trends, six and nine, uh, the less ups and downs you, you get. Uh, right. So in in the nine year trend, there are no ups after about nineteen ninety four, but in the six year, which is the second longest of these, you do have an uptrend, for instance, down here and down here. Yeah, so that's uh, in the longer trends, it's of course evened out more uh, because it's it takes nine years of slightly higher uh, ice volume for it to go up at all. Uh, otherwise, it will just go down in a slower manner. Okay, so that was the technical part, but the important thing here, uh, and uh, with reference to the to the last slide uh, from Joe Tyndall, is that this um, these graphs cover the entire satellite record of uh, of sea ice measurements, and. As you can see, the, the general trend is uh, very sharply down, and it's, there's no there's no persistent uh, tendency for it to to slow down uh, or to to go go back up again, or even to slow down in its in its uh, rapidly downward pace, and that is indicative of a tipping point uh, having already been passed uh, many decades ago it's like the uh, the uh, brick on uh, Joe's book cover you have already pushed the brick so far to the right that it will continue to fall to the ground all right so uh, the the green uh, trend lines here, uh, which are automatically drawn by by Google Graph, uh, they are second order polynomial, I think it's called, 
Um, so they, they are just added uh, as the best uh, fit for these uh, blue uh, data derived uh, graphs. And uh, what you can say in general is that as long as there is an arc and there is a sort of bow shape of the general trend, that means it is going down faster and faster in this case. You know, if it was, uh, if the uh, green uh, general trend was a straight line, it would go down at the same speed uh, year after year. But uh, as long as it's bow shaped or an arc, then it means that it goes faster and faster down. So that indicates that you have some positive feedback mechanisms, which are positive in a physical sense, but not necessarily in a human or political sense. Uh, they're just, uh, the mechanisms are just uh, feeding on themselves, you know, uh, less and less ice, more and more sunshine into the dark ocean, uh, that kind of thing, and uh, more, and more, more and more methane release from, from the uh, seabed uh, hydrates, methane hydrates, and all of these things uh, drag the uh, the uh, volume of sea ice down, and uh, you have fluctuations, but they are just variations over a theme, theme right? So, yeah. Um, so uh, why is uh, this uh, view or this uh, opinion or conclusion that we have already crossed the climate tipping point? Why is it so rare to be found? I mean, uh, just to just to get back to uh, Joe Tyndall uh, in my memory, I had to to search hard to find him and a couple others. Uh, you know, from the past uh, two decades, who have gone there and said that and, and found that conclusion. And they are sort of just, you know, tucked away and I can't even get a publisher to publish their books. Uh, it's crazy, right? right? Because this, this is um, sort of the main contender for the why uh, human civilization will collapse. So it's it's not it's not like a tiny detail uh, topic like uh, you know uh, first century grammar in in the Roman Empire or something like that. This is like this is going to bring us down, all of us. Uh, so it's kind of crazy. And another thing I would like to mention. Uh, on this slide is that do you think any of the the major uh, research institutions that that uh, do this uh, that measure this data do you think they uh, have done any long term turns like this i don't know what you think but the the, the correct answer is no they don't they uh, they uh, hardly calculate any averages at all. It's, it's almost like if you do an average, uh, they treat you like you are suggesting uh, a communist revolution or something. <laughs> it's why, why I say only in CI science, because uh, CI science is, uh, is just... Uh, a minefield of crazy ideas and things that are completely normal in all other sciences, like making a 10 year average, like making a one year average, which you do for for temperature. You know, you've heard people say, uh, yeah, the global temperature in uh, 2018 was the highest or second highest uh, on record. What are they talking about? They're talking about a one year average. Uh, for the planet, or in in local cases, maybe the one year average for New York or London, right? So, but uh, can you talk about one year average for sea ice? Uh, no, because everybody will be crazy mad at you if you even suggest such a thing. So, uh, 
but you know these things are sort of slowly developing and today uh, if people are very very careful and polite they can actually get away with with publishing an, an annual average even though it's an average which uh, key people in the CIS uh, milieu uh, claim that they don't understand at all they can't comprehend the concept of an average um, I don't believe them I think they are playing pretending to be more stupid than they actually are uh, so yeah so as I said it's an uh, it's a minefield and uh, in uh, my case I use uh, the uh, um, not the official but you know as close as you can get to official data for CS volume I use the most uh, respected uh, data providers uh, when it comes to CIS volume and uh, these are just uh, different views for that same data uh, so I, in a way I'm doing the stuff that they should have done uh, but they won't because if they had done this it would be plain to see for everybody on the planet that we crossed the tipping point that there is no way we can cool this climate uh, in a human time scale it's going to go down to zero all year at some point and after that we will have a setback uh, 25 years setback in our struggle to to limit uh, global warming and climate change uh, so the game is practically over and that is why they won't do these graphs uh, because it will be too obvious right so but I'm doing them anyway and you can like that on this video if you like it or you can dislike it I don't care this, this is the truth and uh, that's why I'm doing it right and then different people can prepare in different ways you know depending on uh, how strongly they would like to proceed with their lives and their families and their uh, ways of living right uh, it's better to know what is going on and what is going to happen than to just uh, mess around in the dark in the fog right next slide so this is from uh, Tyndall's video again and he um, divides humanity into three groups when it comes to climate change and the views of that the deniers everybody know knows and hates the deniers they are miserable creeps miserable excuses for human intelligence and uh, then you have the Al Gore crowd uh, and then you have group three which you've never heard of of course because you know if you heard about group three you would understand too much of this thing so uh, deniers that say climate change is not real Al Gore crowd says it's real and the group three says it's real and uh, the big th difference is down here where the group three says we are past the tipping point it's too late to stop it sound familiar there are actually some groups today that agree with that and if you watch my video here uh, a bit carefully you will see that I agree we are past the tipping point as well but it's very hard to find other uh, analysts and thinkers who have published on this fact that we are past the point of no return and the Al Gore crowd believes that the minor marketplace uh, tweaks can fix this that's why they vote the uh, Democrats and they believe in a Green New Deal in uh, England or America they think uh, if you just uh, throw your votes after the less bad the the lesser evil the 
kind of green candidate than uh, capitalism and the marketplace uh, we just uh, magically fix it right and the deniers they are saying that business as usual is just fine why wouldn't they say that they're deniers so right okay so Tyndall argues that there is money behind taking group three people pushing them over to the Al Gore crowd and pushing them even over to the denier crowd so they spend actually money getting people to think the way the rich and powerful want which is illustrated here big energy that's big oil big coal big natural gas they actually pay people and invest big money into brainwashing you when it comes to the climate question okay that's it for the, today bye our data analysis show no methane whatsoever this is a problem when we try to produce methane from hydrates it keeps shutting itself down right so it's not a situation where we trigger breakdown and that that breakdown is going to suddenly like the whole deposit's going to release its methane all of a sudden. That, that's not, that is not a scientifically sound word. Our data analysis shows no methane whatsoever. This is a problem when we try to produce methane from hydrates. It keeps shutting itself down, right? So it's not a situation where we trigger breakdown. You know, that breakdown is going to be a whole deposit to release its methane all of a sudden. That, that's not, that is not a scientifically sound word. Our data analysis showed no methane whatsoever. This is a problem when we try to produce methane from hydrates. It keeps shutting itself down, right? So it's not a situation where we trigger breakdown and that that breakdown is going to suddenly, like the whole deposit is going to release its methane all of a sudden. That, that's not, that is not a scientifically sound word. Our data analysis showed no methane whatsoever. This is a problem when we try to produce methane from hydrates. It keeps shutting itself down. Right? So it's not a situation where we trigger breakdown. You know, that breakdown can be like, the whole deposit is going to finish with nothing all of a sudden. That's, that's not, that's not trying to fix it. work. Data analysis showed no methane whatsoever. This is a problem when we try to produce methane from hydrates. It keeps shutting itself down, right? So it's not a situation where we trigger breakdown and that that breakdown is going to suddenly, like the whole deposit is going to release its methane all of a sudden. That, that's not, that is not a scientifically sound worry. Our data analysis showed no methane whatsoever. This is a problem when we try to produce methane from hydrates. It keeps shutting itself down, right? So it's not a situation where we trigger breakdown and that that breakdown is going to suddenly, like the whole deposit is going to release its methane all of a sudden. That, that's not, that is not a scientifically sound worry. Our data analysis showed no methane whatsoever. This is a problem when we try to produce methane from hydrates. It keeps shutting itself down, right? So it's not a situation where we trigger breakdown that breakdown is going to suddenly, like the whole deposit is going to release its methane all of a sudden. That, that's not, that is not a scientifically sound word. Our data analysis shows no methane whatsoever. This is a problem when we try to produce methane from hydrates. It keeps shutting itself down, right? So it's not a situation where we trigger breakdown. That breakdown is going to suddenly, like the whole deposit is going to release its methane all of a sudden. That, that's not, that is not a scientifically sound word. This is a problem when we try to produce them. Okay. It keeps shutting itself down, right? So it's not a situation where we trigger them. That's not, that is not a scientific Trigger breakdown, and that breakdown is going to suddenly 
all the positive can really really sense my home, but that's, that's not, that is not a scientific found word. Our data analysis showed no methane whatsoever. This is a problem when we try to produce methane from hydrates. It keeps shutting itself down, right? So it's not a situation where we trigger breakdown, and that that breakdown is going to suddenly, like, cold deposit is going to release its methane all of a sudden. That, that's not, that is not a scientifically sound word. Our data analysis showed no methane whatsoever. This is a problem when we try to produce methane from hydrates. It keeps shutting itself down, right? So it's not a situation where we trigger breakdown and that that breakdown is going to suddenly, like the whole deposit is going to release its methane all of a sudden. That, that's not, that is not a scientifically sound worry. Our data analysis showed no methane whatsoever. This is a problem when we try to produce methane from hydrates. It keeps shutting itself down, right? So it's not a situation where we trigger breakdown that breakdown is going to suddenly, like the whole deposit is going to be really all of a sudden. That's that, that not, not a sound worry. Our data analysis showed no methane whatsoever. This is a problem when we try to produce methane from hydrates. It keeps shutting itself down, right? So it's not a situation where we trigger breakdown and that that breakdown is going to suddenly, like the whole deposit is going to release its methane all of a sudden. That, that's not, that is not a scientifically sound worry. This is a problem when we try to produce methane from hydrates. It keeps shutting itself down, right? So it's not a situation where we trigger breakdown. You know, that breakdown is going to suddenly make the whole deposit going to release the methane all of a sudden. That, that's not, it's not a scientifically sound worry. This is a problem when we try to produce methane from hydrates. It keeps shutting itself down, right? So it's not a situation where we trigger breakdown. Our data analysis showed no methane whatsoever. This is a problem when we try to produce methane from hydrates. It keeps shutting itself down, right? So it's not a situation where we trigger breakdown and that that breakdown is going to hold the hydrates. This is a problem when we try to produce methane from hydrates. It keeps shutting itself down, right? So it's not a situation where we trigger breakdown and that that breakdown is going to be like a cold deposit going to release its methane all of a sudden. That, that's not, that is not a scientific sound worry. Our data analysis showed no methane whatsoever. This is a problem when we try to produce methane from hydrates. It keeps shutting itself down, right? So it's not a situation where we trigger breakdown and that that breakdown is going to suddenly, like the whole deposit is going to release its methane all of a sudden. That, that's not, that is not a scientifically sound worry. This is a problem when we try to produce methane from hydrates. It keeps shutting itself down, right? So it's not a situation where we trigger breakdown and that that breakdown is going to suddenly, like the whole deposit is going to release its methane all of a sudden. That, that's not, that is not a scientifically sound worry. This is a problem when we try to produce methane from hydrates. It keeps shutting itself down, right? So it's not a situation where we trigger breakdown and that that breakdown is going to suddenly, like the whole deposit is going to this is a problem when we try to produce methane from hydrates. It keeps shutting itself down, right? So it's not a situation where we trigger breakdown and that breakdown is going to make the whole deposit.